This is a Nexus Special, Episode 55, Apple September 2017 event, on September 12th, 2017. And now, The Notch Bar. This Nexus Special is hosted by Brian Mitchell and Ryan Rampersett. You can find the show notes for this Nexus Special at thenexus.tv slash ns55. Hello. Hey. How was, uh, how was your iPhone-filled day? Uh, my iPhone filled day was pretty empty of iPhones because I was busy all day. Yeah, my day was eh, not quite as busy, I don't think, but I was able to sit in our training room at work watching the keynote on dual projection TV. It was in, you know, with a group too, there are probably 10 to 12 of us maybe. So it was the first time I've ever really watched uh, an Apple keynote with others. So that was kind of fun. Yeah, but it is fun. I had a meeting at one o'clock, which was about when they started the iPhone eight portion. So I got a, I got to spoilers. see all the, the early stuff and then yeah, spoilers. Sorry, <laughs> listener. One listener. Single listener. Yep. <laughs> so I think we should uh, get started with um, where the event was for the first time ever. Yeah. So this was the uh, inaugural event at the new Steve Jobs Theater at the Apple Park campus in Cupertino. So they they played a, a uh, what was it a welcome video before uh, Tim Cook got on the stage, kind of showing off the architecture of the theater, and then they did a little brief overview of the theater and Apple Park. They had a quote from Steve Jobs and um, talked about things about Apple Park, like hundred percent renewable energy and other things that I did not write down. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool and. Uh, it was nice to see uh, them remembering Steve up on the screen. Um, so I, I thought, you know, I, I always think at one of these events, uh, especially m- more now than w- now that they're starting to actually use the new campus, is one day we'll we'll have a keynote begin with, and you know, today, actually, 15 years ago, Steve Jobs recorded this message for this moment- momentous occasion, and then he'll be a hologram walking around or something. Um, pull a tupac i i I don't know but it's it's just it's just gonna happen one day and i thought it could have been today but it wasn't yeah i wonder how long they'll be using steve job quotes now i know adobe is working on some software that lets you (laughs) take in like half an hour of someone speaking and it can create new words out of that yep so i wonder when they'll just start writing steve jobs things and just have this voice that sounds nearly identical to steve jobs saying it yep the future could happen so then we had um, some updates about retail, um, new new things coming in like uh, today at Apple with about um, some training programs and things for coding and using iOS and macOS and the new devices. So they are calling their flagship stores town squares, I believe. That's how I interpreted it. Yeah. So in some of the stores, they're adding this big open space for people just to hang out and be happy together or something yeah create a welcoming environment to encourage you to spend more money by <laughs> all your now, favorite wh- apple products what i think is more interesting and probably uh, sort of a, a happy side effect is they they talked about and this is what they've been doing for a long time is renovating these historic buildings and sites to accommodate these really cool modern and good looking stores and i think that's really nice so you you buy uh, as a company uh, an, an old building and then you make it good again and i think that's really cool for not only apple but also for wherever that building is yeah i really like that too they highlighted a building in washington dc uh, i forget what its purpose was but it looked like a very large building like the size of a city block almost yep to be this new apple store and i think they've had a similar thing in london and uh, i know they've used a few old buildings across europe as well and they also highlighted a new store on michigan avenue in chicago right along the river there i think that'll be quite nice all right next they talked about the apple watch so they started it off with um saying some numbers they uh, still haven't announced how many they've sold or anything. There are some graphs online saying the the performance of the Apple Watch over time, and it starts with good, great, best ever, uh, <laughs> double double of last year, or something like that. And it's just this line for arbitrary values that don't mean anything. That's the best way to do it, really. Yeah, 
and their their earnings calls they have I think Apple Watch bundled into other, and it's like a that's like a six billion dollar per quarter revenue industry, and so you can kind of like gauge it a little bit. But yeah, you don't quite know. Right, that rough ballpark is still too big. Yeah. So what what did they talk about the Apple Watch? What's new? Well, the big flagship feature is uh, an LTE radio. Woo-hoo. So this will allow you to make cellular calls and text messages as well as use data when you're not connected to your phone. So now your Apple Watch can drain its battery even faster when you don't have your phone connected to it. Drain it all the way out. <laughs> It'll only take 18 hours yep. in optimal conditions. Star, 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 star. <laughs> So to to kind of demo the radio, they did a uh, nice phone call with uh, a woman who was on one of those standing paddle boards out in the bay, and I thought that was a, a good way to show uh, that it that it works well when you're not tethered, when you're literally on water, and there's wind and things going on. But it was you know a little cheesy as you would expect a live phone call to go. Yeah, not quite a prank call ordering uh, coffee from Starbucks. Not to that level yet, huh? Not quite. And kind of a tagline they had with the LTE radio was 40 million songs on your wrist to kind of encourage you to use Apple Music. So another feature in the new Apple Watch Series 3 is a barometric altimeter. So this is something that they added to the iPhone 6, maybe, where it can see the pressure. So this, they said, could be helpful for counting how many stairs you've climbed which the iPhone has done for a number of years now, as well as things like uh, skiing to see how many slopes you've gone down. And I think they said they'll be releasing an app for that in the future. If not them, someone else will be. And then they also talked about a new dual-core CPU. Series 1 and Series 2 had a dual-core CPU, but the Series 3 has a 75% more performant CPU. Another new feature is Siri can talk. So previously... On the Apple Watch, you could talk to Siri, but Siri wouldn't say anything. It would put some text on the screen, maybe, or do an action. But now it'll reply in its full Siri-ness. In addition to that, there's the new W2 chip, which has up to 85% faster Wi-Fi and 50, uh, 50% more efficient Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And these models start with a Wi-Fi version at 8 gigabytes for 329 And cellular models start with 16 gigabytes of memory for 399 so what do you think the reason is for the storage size bump on the higher end one? I'm not sure. Maybe some sort of caching. I don't know. Um, yeah. They, I, I don't know if they needed a little space for like baseband firmware and it just made sense to just dump in 16 gigabytes. I don't know if it's technical or just, well, if you're going to be spending $17 more, might as well do 16 gigabytes. I don't know. It's also interesting that... Um, what 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 we what we've heard in the past about uh, Qualcomm licensing is that you know that that cost from one iPhone t- or from one iPad tier to the next iPad tier with cellular mm-hmm. um that $129 was roughly the price that Qualcomm was forcing Apple to almost put in so yeah. at at a mere $80 or $70 you know it's it's uh, quite a bit less so i think that's kind of interesting yeah i think that's a fair deal i mean this device is Small. Maybe half half the price of an iPad with Siler, so yeah, that kind of makes sense. But it's nice that they're putting in more storage too. I I wonder if they're going to be releasing new APIs in the future for WatchOS that will let you leverage caching a little more. Yep. And maybe that's it. I mean, in the end, I can store more photos, which I never use, so I'd probably just do more music. I think there's a limit now at it's either number of songs or gigabytes somewhere in the two gigabyte range maybe so i can put like no i think it's 250 songs well uh, clearly so. the reason is that they had a um they had a bunch of leftover um ipod nano nan chips left over so they just thought they'd just throw them in here exactly or the <laughs> the old iphone 16 gigabyte chips yeah exactly. i wonder if i wonder if that's actually it they just bought hundreds of millions of these chips and they just have more sitting around wouldn't be surprised yeah not at all so with the extra LTE radio and everything, the case is the same size, and the the back crystal is just 0.25 millimeters thicker, which they say is two hair widths. So it's a that's pretty, fine. Won't even notice. Yep. Great, sounds good to me. And there's a new sport loop band, which looks like it's a 
nylon-y loop that has a leather, or not a leather, a uh, magnet on it. Similar to the Milanese loop, but not Milanese. And this will be available on September 22nd. So pretty soon. Yeah, coming up. Pre-orders for a lot of the things they've released today will be on Friday. Likely at midnight Pacific, as they usually do. So next, uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Apple TV 4K. Um, Brian, I want you to guess what the headlining feature is. Uh, uh, is it uh, Gigabit Ethernet? No, it's HDR. Um, no, actually, yes, you're, you're, you you might be right, but I think um, I think Apple believes that 4K is the headlining feature. Oh, I wonder I wonder where they got that from. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. So so yes, it, it can do more than 1080p now. It can do 4K worth of pixels for everybody who has a 4K TV. Uh, it can also do HDR, which is a nice feature to add for the uh, 10 TVs from Samsung that support it. Um, but what I thought was most interesting in the Apple TV segment was that it is using an A10X chip. And that's that's a pretty powerful chip for kind of just a TV just sitting there. Yeah, I would agree. It's the same chip that's in the newest iPad Pro, which I think is pretty... Uh, it's not quite A11 level, but it's pretty close to the new chip in the uh, iPhone 8 that we'll be talking about in a minute. So I wonder if they're needing that power for uh, rendering 4K or the HDR or they just want to push gaming more. Yeah, and, and it's really interesting because I, I don't recall hearing anything um, about you know uh, revised gaming APIs. I, I really don't see the traction there. So I think this might be, um, you know, might be preparation for maybe something next year. Yeah, I wonder. And I think it could also be the the cpu i think that the the standard apple tv has an a9 or a8 and i know that at least for sure doesn't support h evc right or h265 yeah. encoding that's so also a likely reason. that might be part of why they have this so yep yeah but otherwise the uh apple tv 4k starts at 179 and it does drop USB C, but also gets gigabit ethernet replacing the 100 megabit ethernet that was there before well, that's and, good because you're gonna need that to get your 4K streaming to work. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think you'd quite need gigabit for 4K, but it certainly makes things go a little better. Uh, and they also changed the serial remote to include a white circle around the menu button. For Otherwise, for, for everybody who didn't know which button to press. Yeah, I think, or I've I've seen things on Twitter of people complaining about the Siri remote being too slippery and they can't tell which side is up or down. Yeah, I've and heard so that too. Maybe this adds a little bit of context for how to hold it and pick it up. Yep. So it is time for the almost headlining device in this keynote. Yes. The iPhone 7S. I mean, 8. Yeah. I guess. Oh, dear. Um, yeah. So the iPhone 8. So this is a completely new design. Well, kind of, yes. It's like it's like an iPhone 4 and an iPhone 7 just got smushed together. So the, there's still aluminum kind of around the sides, but now the back is glass in addition to the front. So we'll, we'll see how this, this second take on a glass front and back iPhone goes. Wait, I so you're the, telling me that this is the second time Apple's done a phone with a glass back? Yes. Wait, isn't well, that supposed to be under the category of new and revolutionary? It's uh, it's thinner. Oh, it's and, thinner, and bigger. <laughs> uh huh. Um, this time so, it's waterproof. Uh, this time it's waterproof. Okay, so so I really like the glass back approach, and and this enables um, one of the cool features we'll talk about in a moment too. Um, I I I don't mind having a glass back because I end up putting a case on my phones anyway, so I'm okay with it. Yeah, and from what I've heard, the the jet ba- the jet black iPhone seven, which isn't glass but is much more smooth so it's more grippy yeah which is more similar to how glass is is way better for holding it so you don't Mm -hmm. doesn't slide around as much and i remember that from the iphone 4 as well and 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 i did have a case so i didn't and unlike the um what is it piano black or jet black unlike the smooth black one um this glass version might not have so much micro abrasion issue yeah definitely yeah 
So in addition to this great new uh, glass case, the, the front of the phone has a Retina HD display with True Tone. So this is a feature that Apple brought to the iPad Pro. Uh, what was that? A year ish. Yeah, ago? about a year ago. And so this is a you know a ten bit color. No, that that was something I already had. Sorry, uh, Retina HD is the uh, HDR, and the True Tone is adapting the white balance of the of the display to match the uh, environment around it. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I sometimes have my iPad and I put my hand over the sensor and then the screen turns a little orange but <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen too much in the iphone so the 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 chip in the new phone it has a weird name so it is the a11 of course but there's a word after it this time and it's kind of bizarre yeah i i wonder where they were going with that but it's called the a11 bionic and i don't know where they're going with it i don't like there aren't like any bionic features I don't I don't know. I don't get it. Um but it's a 64-bit chip since they have been for the last like 6 years. Um a yep. lot of transistors, 4.3 billion, which is a lot. It's not I don't a small know how number. How many are in a normal CPU, but 4.3 um, billion sounds like a lot. So so uh I don't have numbers like hot off the press, but it's probably, you know, between 3 and a half and 5. So it has, and, and I think this core configuration is really interesting. So it has two performance cores, um, which are two large CPU uh, or core dies, and those are running um, for doing actual tasks, uh, you know, handling actual main threads of programs that are in the foreground or something that needs to be bursty that has speed. Yeah. But then it also has four other cores, which they're calling high efficiency cores, which are probably clocked lower. Um, that use less power and these would be doing things that are in the background and uh, i think this core configuration is really nice because it's it's um more power conservative than something like big little or little big whatever they call it these days um, which is the typical core configuration from someone like qualcomm where they have four big cores and four little cores and they do the same kind of workload balancing but the the power draw is just more there because there are two more actual high power cores yeah, I think an uh, uh, offset hybrid six-core architecture is, sounds like it'll work pretty well. Yep. So, yeah, the performance cores are 25% faster than the A10, and the high-efficiency cores are 70% faster than the A10. And they also talked about a second-generation performance controller that's 70% faster for multi-thread workloads. So, got lots of speed. And I saw um, leaked or Geekbench uh, ratings now hasn't been released yet, so you just have to hope that it's accurate, but it seems like the A11 Bionic is even faster than an i7-6600U CPU at single-thread tasks. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I pulled up the, the leaked numbers here, and um, I'll put them in the show notes for all of our hardcore listeners but but basically the galaxy s8 the phone that i have right now in my hand the the, more or less the phone that is the um secret phone that we'll tell you about later um it has half the performance basically on single core and about two-thirds the performance on multi-core the 13 inch 2007 macbook pro has about the same or yeah 2017 has about the same performance as the new phone so it's uh, it's quite a chip. Not the same. A little worse for multi-core performance. The I would say about the, the iPhone. Same. The iPhone. Well, for multi-core, the iPhone's like ten percent faster. Yeah, but the the big the big computer has to do more. That's true. Yeah. So the performance of these chips are just amazing out there. It's awesome. Yeah. Um. So they, Apple has also been uh, designing a new GPU that is in this SOC. So they've previously been using uh, some company that I don't remember. Is it, is it iMation GPUs. or is it somebody else? iMation or I some, think pow- Power was in the name. Well, Power VR is the chip kind, but who? Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. iMation maybe. I don't know. They're designing their own GPUs now. So 
or uh, imagination technologies apparently okay. yeah maybe yeah that sounds right so they're packing even more gpu performance in their chips uh, i saw someone on twitter say they're hiring more for gpu architecture so uh, apple is really going um pretty fast with their chip chip teams yeah, they didn't seem to say like how much better this chip was compared to what they had before. Um, presumably, it's better, or at least it's the same, if not more conservative in power use. Yeah. In yeah. the last couple of years, they've, maybe more so for iPads, but they've released this chart with this like almost exponential growth. Not, not quite exponential, but... It's easy to get those well, exponential kind of. charts when you don't put a Y-axis on, so got to be careful with those. Yeah, but a chart with an incredible growth on CPU and GPU performance. So oh. I wonder if they're kind of at their limit here, which wouldn't surprise me because they've been going extremely aggressive for the last three or four years for improvements. Uh, so we also have uh, Bluetooth 5, which is very exciting for the almost zero devices that support Bluetooth 5. We'll get there. And yeah. I think uh, Bluetooth 5 supports pairing to two it devices fully at once yep versus bluetooth 4.2 or something something in bluetooth 4 supports like a one and then another you can kind of toggle but not at the right. same time okay. yep so hopefully hopefully um i don't know maybe maybe some of those new uh what is it called the home pod maybe that will have a uh, bluetooth 5 i think that's exactly their their point because mm. the airplay 2 protocol will support streaming to multiple at once as well but the airplay protocol i think goes over wi-fi but maybe they'll do bluetooth now I don't maybe know. but the more important um integration with sort of an industry standard is wireless charging yes that is something that i've seen people complain about for iphones for a number of years now and i think um with a glass back that kind of opens the doors to allowing some power to flow through opens the doors again Again, correct. Yeah. <laughs> so this follows the Qi standard, which is a standard used in many other devices for wireless charging. And I've even seen mats in things like coffee shops and airports for these wireless chargers. So there's already things out there in the world that the iPhone could just immediately start using. And I think that's pretty nice. Yeah, I think it's great. Um, I'm really looking forward to... Um see what this does with the broader industry because android phones have had wireless charging on various models for years i mean it's my phone has it dozens of other phones have it um any phone that has a uh, metal body can't do wireless charging because you can't for some reason um something with electricity and metal conducting or something but yep. now with with most phones having a non-metal back it's possible um and I wonder what the broader industry will do now that this will be on iPhones and for, you know, maybe in in two years when a majority of iPhones have this that are outside in the wild, um, you know, what peripherals will come out? What, what new additions will come out? I have a feeling that with the iPhone doing wireless charging that now every phone will come out with it because yeah. it's now, now it's like it's mainstream phone. You got to support it or you're going to stand out for not doing that right and i'm and i'm okay with that i want every phone to have it um so i i don't use it when i when i charge my phone overnight but when i come home from work i just put my phone in this uh wireless charging cradle on the main floor of the house and i just let it sit there for you know 25 30 minutes while i go and play with the dog outside and when i come back it's ready to go uh it's it's probably charged 30 percent easily so it's yeah. fast and it's easy to just put down and pick up again so i really like it yeah that's great i would like to uh, i have a little phone mount for my car that mm -hmm. s fits in the cd player because who uses that these days yeah and so i'm just thinking of the day where i can buy one of those that has a wireless charging thing in the into the the mount so i can just kind of put right. my phone there yep I don't have to plug in a cable yeah and i think absolutely i think that's really cool um and hopefully we'll see it soon yeah so some other improvements with the phone is uh, a better speaker system. So they're louder and have more bass. Cool improvements. Solid. 
they did some camera improvements as well. So the sensor is still 12 megapixels, but uh, they've kind of redone it with larger and faster sensors. There's a new color filter, uh, deeper pixels. I don't really know what that means. Probably on the sensor, the pixels are deeper so they can hold more light. I don't know. Something, something camera physics. Uh, the apertures, I believe, are the same as before, f1.8 and f2.8 on the iPhone 8 Plus. Yeah, but they, want, but, but, but they but they, they, they wanted to make it sound new, so they just put it up there again. Yes. Uh, and new in the 8 Plus, the there's dual optical image stabilization, so the telephoto also has image stabilization. The 7 Plus only had that on the main uh, sensor. Uh, there's two times better uniformity on the quad co- uh, wow quad tone LED flash. Quad core flash. Quad core flash. Brighter I than mean, ever. Four cores, four LEDs, same thing. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, there's a slow sync flash, and the whole system is tuned for augmented reality. Um, Apple also designed an image signal processor, which should help kind of smooth out and um, make the images sharper and less grainy. And I guess that's the same thing, isn't it? Better images. Uh, they also designed their own video encoder. I think that's that lives on the A11 as well as the image signal processor. Um, combining that with the new HEV, uh, shoot, HEVC, yeah, uh, you can now record 4K at 60 frames per second and 1080p at 240 frames per second. So slow-mo gets a boost and 4K gets a boost all around. Some nice new features. And on the iPhone 8 Plus, there's a new feature called portrait lighting which lets you do a front-facing portrait. I think it kind of uh, enhances the lighting on your face and kind of dims the lighting out behind you to really make your your portrait pop out from the background in a way that the standard portrait does not. I thought the effect was pretty cool. I, I don't know how many people will use it, but I think it looks pretty nice. I'll, I'll go to the Apple Store sometime and take a selfie. Yeah. Give it a shot. So so tell me about the new size configuration, because I recall that there were three sizes before. Yes. So the iPhone 7 had a 32 gigabyte, 128 gigabyte, and 256 gigabyte configuration. Now this year, they just lobbed off the middle two and let it go from 64 gigabytes to 256 gigabytes. Does, do, you, do you think that's a good plan? I like that plan. Yeah. I think 64 gigabytes is... Uh, I mean, it's double 32. It's four times more than 16. I, um, I'm just doing math now. But that's, I mean, I just, I'm just saying, a little over a year ago, the baseline had 16 gigabytes. And to right. go, you know, leapfrog an, a generation and you're quadrupling the storage, that's pretty good, I think. I agree. And and I think it's been a long time coming for Apple to put some uh, better than reasonable storage sizes in these phones. Um, so I, I have... Um, I've I've had a few phones now with 64 at least gigabytes of storage, and I don't think I could use a phone that only has 32 as a baseline, because you know you put your standard, you know, set of apps on and you take pictures for a few months and suddenly you're just out of space. With 64 gigs, you should be able to last quite a while. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, my first phone was the iPhone 4, and that had 32 gigabytes, and that was the largest you could go that time. So I'm going to ask you were tiny then and stuff, but yes. So I'm going to ask you about price next. So the first one, the 64 gigabyte model, how much does it cost? The 64 starts at 699, and the bigger one costs how much? Uh, 799, I think. Wow! Don't quote well, me on that. Only a hundred dollars difference. That's amazing. Yeah. So they're they're not uh, Apple taxing storage as they used to. Right, and I think that's uh amazing and wonderful and it's about time um also what they're doing that's even better is they're not apple taxing the the two prices in between yeah <laughs> sorry i lied it was 849 not 799 oh, now everybody's sad uh 150 isn't bad still though because it's still double double of the baseline yeah. so that well now they increased the uh base price by 50 dollars. so the iPhone 7 used to start at 649. So, the 256 still costs the same, but the baseline is more for more. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I still like it better this way. Um, and I think this is... Yeah. So what's interesting is that many vendors have started to not offer storage size choices. So the S8, for example, only comes in 64. Hmm. And now a lot of Android phones don't have SIM cards anymore. Is that right? Uh, the, the, the Samsung line does come with micro SD, so it's fine. Sorry, micro SD. Yes, that's yep. what I meant. I think it's the Nexus or Pixel ones that. Don't. Oh yeah, the 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 Google lineup has never come with micro SD ever. Actually, so it's fine. Okay. Um, so funny thing, I just went to the website to to look at the pricing, and so when you try to buy, when you go to the buy page, the shop page for buy iPhone, it doesn't mm-hmm. say like coming soon. It just says currently unavailable. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's currently unavailable, but is it coming soon? Well, no, we don't know. So when are these going to be available? So these are up for pre-order this Friday at 12 a.m. Pacific time, and they will be released on September 22nd. Well, that sounds pretty good then. Yeah. Pretty standard for a iPhone release. Now, tell me about this unusual special phone to celebrate the anniversary of the iPhone. Yes. So... In classic Apple fas- fashion, we had a one more thing drop, which I, it just, it's not very common anymore. I think we've only had a, a small handful of those since Steve Jobs uh, died a few years ago. Yep. So that was nice to see. So the iPhone X, with, that is a Roman numeral X, not pronounced X though, just like Mac OS X was Mac OS X and not Mac OS X. We'll see if that ever. Uh, nobody will get the it. Public over. No, nobody will understand. I don't even understand. <laughs> it's just so bad. I don't even know. Oh well, I think you know. I, well, what I ju- think it's, is it's just like the new iPad from a few years ago. The new new iPad. Yes. Well, well, that's what happened to the second new iPad. But the new <laughs> iPad was the new iPad the first time it was new. And then with <sighs> the. What do they call it? They, Apple calls it the iPad fifth generation, but it's really like the ninth generation iPad. Oh, we all should just give up at this point. <laughs> so I think next fall we're going to have to see what they're going to do with the names because... Well, so we'll talk about what they do with this line uh, after we get done talking about all that it does. All right. Sounds good. So, so... <laughs> this 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 matches the iPhone 8 in many ways. So it has the uh, the glass back as well. Uh, now it has a stainless steel band instead of an aluminum band. Um, it has what Apple calls a super retina display, which has a 5.8 inch display with a resolution of 2436 by 1125 at 458 PPI. And that's at a three X resolution. So it'll render everything the same way that the iPhone eight plus does. Um, but the iPhone 8 Plus has a 1080p panel, so it scales it down just a little bit. So this will run the same assets, but at native resolution. The screen looks beautiful. It is... Um, so in the pictures, it's hard to tell if it's like... It It looks edge-to-edge, but there still seems to be this very small sliver of black bezel. Does that yeah, what it looks like to there's you? Definitely, yeah, I think the screen only goes to the edge of the flat part of the of the display mm-hmm. maybe a teensy bit of roundiness but it looks for the most part it that the screen curves after the screen stops it's and the and glass s- curves after the screen stops and, yeah. and i'm pretty much okay with that so the s8 um has this really cool effect where the screen actually cur- goes under the curve to the side of the phone almost um mm-hmm. it's a very soft curve um, it's not as harsh as like the S7 Edge was, um, and, and so I still have to give the screen edge, ironically, to the one with no edge, which would be the S8. Um, it just looks like the display melts off into the to the edges. On the other hand, the iPhone is probably easier to swipe around because you don't have to swipe from the edge quite as much. Yeah, I think for having a case on your phone, it's a little easier when there's a little more of a bezel to get your finger on. Yeah. Um, I think what's most important is that the top bezels are pretty much removed. Yep. And so that really makes the screen a lot larger and the phone appear much larger as well. Yep, definitely. So what, what makes this retina display super? Um, is it the, uh, Samsung OLED display in it? Probably. (laughs) Though, 
I don't know if it's Samsung. Maybe. Maybe it's LG. Those are the suppliers I think Apple usually uses. Yeah, something like this that. Was, so OLED panels have been out for many years, but this is the first time that it, there was one available at Apple's standards. So in the past, the color accuracy and um, dynamic range of a OLED panel wasn't that of Apple's retina displays, and so they didn't want to... Allegedly. Uh, allegedly, Yes. I don't know if you could tell. I, I remember reading many years ago read-ups of the AMOLED displays, and the greens were much more strong than the other colors. So Yeah, something like that. So, like, um, on some AMOLED displays, the, um, the, blue, the blue pixels or the green pixels, they would um, have a shorter shelf life of, a, of on time than other pixels, and so they would uh, get darker faster over time yeah that would be bad so that's probably why they put more on there and... but like i said allegedly yeah at you know the same time it slowly is going to fade over time and the user is not really going to notice so i did want to put this one in so i saw this tweet from somebody on twitter um so the iphone uh 10's oled panel has 625 nits of brightness the the uh, Note and uh, S8 models have over a thousand uh, nits of brightness. So the 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 S8 panel, when I take it outside, I can use it in full daylight directly and not even notice. Um, so it's extremely bright, and so I hope that the the X panel is good enough for that. See what I did there? The X panel. <laughs> yeah, I I see a reply in here too saying that the iPhone 10 panel is the same, has the same number of nits as the previous iPhone 7 and the new iPhone 8. So it's not any worse than before. Right. It's just not as bright as some other phones on the market. And yep. I know the Apple Watch, at least the Series 2 had a thousand nit brightness. So it's brighter than the iPhone 10. But um, I think that's a little different display. So they're probably not going for color accuracy there. They just want it to be bright. Yeah, I, I I'm looking at uh, another tweet in the same thread um, about comparing the pixel density um, and stuff. So it, it's there, you know, it's it's a really good panel, but I mean, it it's it might be somewhat disingenuous to say that meets Apple standards in in a in a light that uh, frowns upon the other panels out there. Yeah. So another feature that makes this display super is it has HDR support. Yay. So it supports Dolby Vision and HDR10, much like the new Apple TV 4K HDR. Um, it still has True Tone, which is like the iPhone 8. It still has 3D Touch, and it has a contrast ratio of a million to one. I've heard that these Pretty contrast good. ratio ratios are very much just pulling numbers out of the air because they're it's hard to con- it's hard to measure and things. The the long story short is. OLED panels have a much better contrast ratio, so live it up. So embrace the notch. So one thing that matters to me, and I, uh, so do you have a an iPhone with a black face? I do. Yes. So when you look at the panel, um, and then the bezels when it's off, does the screen have the same color as the surrounding bezels? When I'm not looking at it in direct light, yes. Okay. So, um. I have never seen a phone where the panel matches the bezel color. And so we'll see if this phone has that. If it does, I'll be very impressed. Now, like my iPhone 7 has just a small amount of padding around the screen before the bezel. So you see a little bit of a lighter gray there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that might always be the case. But I want I want the I want the black that is on the face to match the black that is the panel when it's off. That's what I want. That's what I need. I remember being blown away by the Apple Watch when it was released two years ago because it has an OLED panel, and you really can't tell unless the sun is shining straight down onto your watch. It just kind of bleeds off. It's just, you know, magical little, a magic display on your wrist kind of thing. And, and, I, I, and I'm I, hoping that's more the case for the iPhone ten. Yeah, and I think that's a really cool effect, and I, and I wish everybody appreciated it as much as I did. <laughs> yes, that'd be nice. Yep. So, you know, with this new phone with no screen space for a home button, where's the home button? It's gone. So th- there's uh, everything that the home button did is now replaced with gestures. Gestures? How am I a poor 
uneducated user going to learn how to do something new? Painfully. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think the the idea of having gestures is quite nice, but you do have to learn them all. So it's there's going to be a little bit more of a learning curve. I think the nice thing here is I feel like people who get the iPhone 10 are going to be ones who are a little more aware of the right. nice features that it has. So they might be more willing to learn this. So instead of just clicking or pressing the button to go home, you now swipe up from the bottom. Instead of double double tapping to go to multitasking, you now swipe up and hold a little bit, and then the multitasking view comes in. Uh, they also have a feature where on the bottom of the screen, there's kind of a, a bar that appears that is kind of a system level thing that you can swipe left and right to go forward and backwards in apps without going fully into the multitasking view. Uh, to go to Siri, you hold down the uh, side button, and when you're you know in wiggle mode on your app icons, if you're rearranging them on your home screen, there's a done button that appears in the top right instead of pressing the home button again to end that mode. I'm going to ask a really stupid question. What is the side button? Uh, that is the sleep button. Is that the power uh, button? Yeah. Okay. But it was a little strange because Phil Schiller described it as side button. Yeah, so, yeah, I know he did, and I was baffled. Yeah, that seems maybe he just stumbled for words, but uh, it's canon it's, now. No, no, he didn't though, because on the official website under design under iPhone 10, it says press and hold the side button. Huh. But but I I I, I so the the S8 has the stupid button. I mean Bixby button. <laughs> sorry, um, and the Bixby button is stupid. Um. And when you click it, it summons Bigsby, and you don't actually ever want to do that, but you end up clicking it because it's there. Yeah. So we'll we'll see how many accidental Siri triggers we get. It's kind of cool. Another new thing in iOS 11 is if you hit the side button uh, five times, it will lock your phone, and you and including Touch ID or Face ID, which we'll get to soon. So you'll have to re-authenticate with a pin or alphanumeric phrase if you press it five times and that's something i think they did for if you're in a sticky situation and you don't want someone to get in your phone you can quickly press it five times and really lock your phone down i think that's pretty cool um i wish um google phones and just android in general had that kind of panic escape mode kind of thing yeah i i quite like that feature for sure so with this large screen and things there is a notch on the top and i've been seeing uh as you know, a lot of this stuff has leaked in the previous few weeks. Um, there are new API endpoints for the the notch for things like what what is uh, going necessarily going to be there or not in terms of spacing. Um, so those are things that apps will have to support. Um, full screen videos do fill the entire screen, so you do see a notch um, overlaying the content. Um, what else is there? The corners of the screen are rounded, matching the roundness of the corners of the case. Um, but a lot of that is kind of filled by system UI. So the status bar is just has some rounded corners. And so the apps only get a little bit of roundness in their interface, which um, I think is often filled with padding anyway. So it doesn't really affect how you use your phone or things being out of place. Mm-hmm. So I think it's interesting with the notch um, is that a phone just a few months ago that nobody cared about at all came out, which was the Essential phone, and it also had a notch for the front-facing camera. And, like, it was the first time anybody really had ever done that, and it's just there. Yeah, I think I, I really like the look of filling the screen having the same amount of padding around your whole phone really makes it look more Much balanced smaller. yeah 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 so i i think the notch is really cool um and I, I i it's funny that again just like the s8 um apple is is late to the notch even so either way <laughs> yes so um, so tell me more about this face id thing you mentioned yeah so this is going along with Apple's biometric kit and um, improving security beyond just a passcode. So they introduced Touch ID, what, four years ago with the iPhone 5S? And now they're 
since they got rid of the home button, they are doing Face ID. So this is a face, face authentication, um, and it's kind of built hardware-wise with a true depth camera system. So this is what builds the notch. So this is an infrared camera, a flood illuminator, a front camera, a dot projector, proximity sensor, ambient light sensor, speaker, and microphone. So the last four things there are standard, and the first four were the new things that built this system. Um, I just love the words flood illuminator. I I yeah. just can't get over it. <laughs> it's just like, just throw it all out there, illuminate everything. Yeah, I just, I just love it. Yeah. So the, the whole system works with um, shining infrared light with an infrared camera. That dot projector puts, I think it was... 30,000 points on the face to scan it. That's a lot of points. Yeah, so it's it's combining, I think, the front camera, the infrared camera to kind of get a little bit of a 3D space as well as mapping the dots. This It's probably something crazy with, you know, how long it takes the dot to hit and then bounce back. So, like, a light sonar, maybe. I'm not sure exactly how it works. Or just tracking how it moves, your face moves around. But it's supposed to be quite accurate um, with a failure rate of one in a million, where Touch ID was a failure rate of one in fifty thousand, and by failure rate I mean it would authenticate another user that's not yourself. They did have a, a little note in this keynote though, saying uh, the failure rate is higher when you are in the same bloodline. So I would imagine twins would be um, in a stickier st- situation. I think uh, who is it? Phil said something about you should probably use a different password for secure things for your family but that makes sense so my my question about this this whole camera business is is it actually more secure enough to reliably authenticate with things unlike a fingerprint so like just like so it's more of an id and less of a password right so mm-hmm I don't know. It's you know, it's cool, but again, it's not a solution to passwords. It's a sol- problem. It's a solution to solving the problem of identity. Yeah, but isn't that what passwords are to prove that you no. are who you say you are? N- passwords are to um authenticate your identity. But this doesn't authenticate your identity. This just says who you are. Yeah. It's like a username because you can't change it. Yeah. Um But it yeah. But one thing I thought was super cool um, about Face ID is that it, over time, so like let's say you're growing a beard, it'll learn what you look like with a beard. And I think that's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's so they, they talk about this i11 bionic uh, neural engine, which is yeah. a, quote, specialized hardware built for a set of machine learning algorithms. Allegedly. So, you know, neural nets, um, it's a, they said it's a dual core design, 600 billion operations per second and real time processing. Uh, I have to imagine this is a little sub chip on the A11 Bionic. Yeah, it has processor. to be. Um, so these are what those, is, this is what those other two cores were supposed to be doing, I guess. Yeah. So maybe it is an eight core chip. So, so I wonder um, like when is, when are these two dual cores on? So like they're on when your phone senses that you're about to touch it. When you're touching it and bringing it up to your face, it turns on, does stuff, and then turns off. Yeah, I would. I'd imagine so. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. I would. I'd think it would take more time to initialize the camera than it would to probably spin up those those cores. Yep. So they they, um, they probably have taken some liberties to figure that out too. So like, what can they do to make that camera speed up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this whole thing is protected by the secure enclave, much like Touch ID. There's It's all on-device processing. That's excellent. Yeah, and it requires user attention to unlock, meaning you can't be looking away or pointing the phone not really at you. You have to you know, look at the phone and kind of visibly confirm that you are intending on unlocking it. Yep. And I do think you can disable that in accessibility settings for those who are blind or some other reason. Right. So I wonder... Um is there an expression you can make at it that signals you're under duress? <laughs> Ooh, I wonder. <laughs> That's such I a mean, ridiculous they, question. They clearly probably have the ability to do that because yeah. our next topic is Animoji. So this is using the same technology as that that goes into Face ID to really track your face. I think they say they track uh, 50 facial muscle movements um, and they'll let you 
do animated emojis. So they have 12 emojis to start with, which include many animals, a robot, and of course your favorite smiling pile of poo. Uh, <laughs> no, no humans or, you know, yellow smiley face like emojis, which I thought was a little interesting. And they did a nice cheesy demo uh, with things like Craig Federighi uh, clucking like a chicken. And um, I think, yeah, he even sent a little video to Tim Cook, who replied back with a little robot. And in the video, uh, introducing the whole thing with a clip of Johnny Ive also being an emojied. I thought that was all quite fun. And uh, a comment I really liked on that was saying, I would have bet money on Eddie Q being the first Apple SVP to cluck like a chicken on the stage. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll put that in the show. I thought it was stage. really cool, too, and I really don't care for emoji that much. Um, I wonder, I wonder, um, so, like, is it is it something you can send to somebody else outside of iMessage, or is it just iMessage only? Um, so it looked like it was an iMessage extension. Okay, that makes sense. So... I'm not sure if they'll expose that in other apps. Nah, probably not. I imagine they're sent as images and videos. Yeah. Much like a sticker. So it's just, I think it's just like a sticker pack, essentially. Yep. Someone had a a fun project writing that, I bet. Oh, yeah. I wonder if that was even something like an intern. I could totally see that. Uh, That was probably more work than an intern can do. But maybe interns worked on it. (laughs) Oh, I'm sure interns did maybe maybe who knows yeah nobody knows so the camera on the iphone 10 is much like that on the iphone 8 plus um it's i think it's telephoto lens has a slightly uh different aperture i see it i had a typo in the show notes it's f 1.8 and f 2.4 for the telephoto there so slightly better aperture for that it has the a11 bionic cpu it has wireless charging it comes in space gray or silver, no gold for the iPhone 10. For now, I'll just wait until, I don't know, like February 1st, and suddenly there'll be a gold one for Valentine's Day. A gold one, and then a red one a month oh, later for the well, product le- red release. No, no, it would be rose gold for Valentine's Day. That lines up better. There we go, yeah. Yeah. And then gold, then red. Then they'll probably do like a navy or a royal blue. Yeah. Who knows? So we've got all the colors planned out. So what about the size options? Uh, same as the iPhone 8, so that's 64 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes. Unheard now, of consistency. Unheard of. <laughs> uh, so, so, so you so the price yeah. has to be absurd. It has to be like fifteen hundred dollars, right? No, you that is fifty percent more than what it actually costs. So this <laughs> starts at just nine ninety nine. Woohoo! With the two fifty six gigabyte at eleven forty nine. So not bad. It's, it's pretty good. Three hundred dollars more than the iPhone 8. But I think that's, to me, that makes sense, and I think that's okay. Yeah. I think so, a lot of these features will trickle down to iPhones in the coming years. Yep. Um, so, I, I, I mean, that that has to be true. Samsung is already um, already doing basically the same phone for $600. Mm-hmm. So, I and mean... things like a stainless steel band aren't really necessary. Right. I think that's... I don't think we'll see that in future years. Right. Um, yep. I feel like the iPhone 10 is a one-off phone for just this year, and I feel like next year the the iPhone will be kind of unified again with just a, a standard and a plus model. <laughs> but maybe yeah. not. I don't know. I think they do need to release a lower-end iPhone as well. Uh, no, um, to be clear, a lower-end but good and new yes. model. I think... I think uh, Apple releasing an SE model again this spring would be a very good idea. Yeah. I know it's a size that a lot of people like. Yep. Um, one more additional little sensor in the iPhone 10 that they didn't announce, but they um, they put up on their page was the iPhone 10 leather folio case. So this has a little magnetic sensor in the side. So it will open it uh, or turn on and turn off the screen, much like an iPad when you open and close this case. Um, so that was a little interesting thing. And I think that was even found in the leaked iOS 11 Goldmaster build I, this weekend. I, for all the listeners out there who are thinking about getting the iPhone 10, and for some reason simultaneously thinking about getting this leather case, please don't. It ruins a good phone. <laughs> yeah, I I really don't like the cases that have a little flap to cover the screen. I hate That's them. That's just 
Oh, it's the like worst. why? Why even have a phone that is all display when you're going to cover it again? Because that leather case also supports wireless charging. On the product page, it says <sighs> you can even charge it without taking it off. I shouldn't have to charge my leather portfolio case. <laughs> I, I saw that so this case costs ninety nine dollars and I thought instantly oh nice they're releasing a battery case that's leather and nice no nope. and then no it's just an expensive case that doesn't even charge it so yep on this iPhone ten that I'm not gonna buy I will also not buy this leather case <laughs> exactly um so they also mentioned that there's 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 one more sort of one more thing so there's also this side note about um air power. Yes. So this is a wireless charging mat that Apple will be, re- will be releasing in sometime in 2018. They will charge the new iPhones, Apple Watch Series 3, and AirPods with a new wireless charge case. So you can put all your devices on one little mat. It'll charge them all. And it showed a nice little animation and message of your iPhone 8 or 10 uh, showing these devices as you put them on the mat. So you have one central place to see the charge levels on all your on all your devices that's pretty cool um i'm sure this is going to be 150 dollars or something absurd so you know yeah i'm i'm thinking the same I, and i honestly my you know 20 dollar five port usb chargers are good enough yes they're good enough they're a little more annoying to use in terms of like cables and convenience but i don't really know if it's worth it to me to spend i don't know 150 on this but we'll see so before we um well let's let's talk about the pricing lineup and what's out there now and then we can talk about what the future is. Yeah, so right now Apple will sell you one of five different models of iPhones. So these are iPhones well, I guess technically maybe six. I mean so, technically there's actually dozens of SKUs because of color and size, but don't let prob- that stop prob- you. Probably hundreds at this point. Yeah, it's absurd. But- so much for a simple Apple when Steve Jobs came back in the 90s. Yeah, long gone. <laughs> so they'll sell you an iPhone SE for 349 an iPhone 6S from 449 an iPhone 7 from 549 an iPhone 8 from 699 and an iPhone 10 from 999 Now, they also have the iPhone 8 Plus in there. Yeah. So, that, I mean, it is a perfect price umbrella. It is an amazing lineup. Um and from what you can see here, we have covered 6, 7, and 8. But what happens next year? What is the next number? Uh, that's a great question. Is it is it 9 and 11? Uh, they're going to do <laughs> iPhone 10 update 1. Oh, I- that iPhone would be 10, amazing. iPhone 10 anniversary edition, iPhone 10 creators update. I think, <laughs> I think that's definitely the route they're going to go. Yeah, I, I hope not. Um, so or I something I saw was maybe it'll be iPhone. Well, they can't do it because it's ten, not X. They're going to say iPhone X one, X two. I don't know. The, I don't that'd know. Just be ten, or eleven, twelve kind of thing. I yeah, I, I, they could do that. I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they'll just stop calling it a number anymore. I don't know. The new, 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 <laughs> new iPhone. Yeah, I don't know. It's it. I like the X. Everybody loves the X. You know, X it's is a very great. popular yeah. letter. I mean, they had Mac OS X with an X for what? I mean, I, they still have it. Well, they kind of, well, no. No. They, they, dropped, yeah. they dropped that from their product names. But the yeah. version number is still 10 dot whatever. So. Right. So so the, the future of, of that, it will, will be um, a mystery. So. Some of the technology in the future, though. So, do you think we'll see um, Face ID on like iPads in the future? That's a good question. Um, maybe I I don't know because the iPad is a little more of a sit down rather than a hold device. So you you aren't necessarily pointing it at your face quite as much as you would right with a phone. Um, I I don't know maybe. And I wonder about that with uh, a Mac as well. I saw someone tweet. Mm, um, that's a good point. That App- Apple has already like deprecated a technology before they've even put it on all their Macs. And you know, Touch ID is still pretty young on Mac OS. Yeah. And, and to be honest, I would, I would be okay getting rid of the touch bar 
for the um the notch bar. <laughs> <laughs> the notch bar. Yep, the notch I, bar. I would love to see uh smaller bezels on a Mac. I think that'd be quite nice. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, that's that's a good question. I think it's. I would have to imagine that a Touch ID sensor is cheaper to make than a whole Face ID. So probably. That but makes on the me other hand, it a little bit. You, you know, Touch ID um, probably doesn't require the Sapphire surface, and I have no idea how the sensors work. So, you know, roughly are four visual sensors cheaper than one physical sensor? I have no idea. Yeah, that's a good point. So let's just talk about some software updates and uh, wrap it up. Yeah, so the iOS 11 Goldmaster was released today, um, but it will be released to the public on next Tuesday, September 19th, uh, as long or as well with watchOS 4 and tvOS whatever version it's at. I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, Mac OS High Sierra will be released on September 25th. Well, that sounds pretty good then. Yeah, a good lineup. Um, I'll be updating my devices to that as soon as they're available. And uh, Mac OS will see on my Hackintosh. I have no idea how that yeah, is supported. Yeah, that's always that's, tough to do. I've done it on launch day before, but I haven't seen anything about it lately. And I know the APFS might have some issues. I'm not sure. So, so I always ask this every time we do a keynote. Uh, how would you rate this keynote from past iPhone keynotes? Hmm. Uh, I knew probably the most out of any keynote that I've watched before this one. <laughs> so much for double down. And that, that's that's pretty much only increased in you know year over year. More and more it gets leaked out. Yeah. This year seemed particularly bad. Um, seeing as I only watched half of it live, and. I don't know. It was it was pretty good, entertaining. I'd give it a eight out of ten. So I think for me, this one was better than the last couple of years. Um, like this this is the first uh, new iPhone versus just the next upgraded version. Yeah. Yeah. I do think it's kind of interesting. I think we're kind of the iPhone line as a design has pretty much. Um, matured here the case design is quite or pretty much the same as the iphone 6 so it's it's kind of stayed stagnant but that's i think a good thing it lets you um be more familiar with it and i don't know case manufacturer now now there are little things like the home button being a different size and whatnot that makes it incompatible but yeah but it gets everybody familiar and sort of on the same page over time yeah yeah, definitely. Um, I think I'm more excited about a keynote if I know I'm going to be buying the phone beforehand. And since I bought the iPhone 7 last year, I knew I wouldn't be buying this one. So I was excited for the watch part because I kind of yesterday or the day before decided I think I'll buy a new watch if they release it. So that was kind of fun. Yep. Well, I, I've I've only done two... Wait. Have I? I've only done one out of three phones this year, so there's still time. There's still time. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, thanks for doing this uh, next special with me. Um, uh, can you remind everybody what this uh, keynote was? This was the Apple September 2017 event. And can you remind everybody where they might be able to find the show notes for this episode? Yes. This... the <laughs> the. The show notes for this episode can be found at thenexus.tv slash ns55. And can you remind everybody where they can find you on the internet? Absolutely, Ryan. So you can find me on the internet just about anywhere, but especially on Twitter at Brian Mitch L, where you can see me retweeting and tweeting about Apple things, especially this week when I'll be saying lots of hot takes on the latest iPhone features and software improvements. And of course... What about you, Ryan? You can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Martin, and of course, on my website, RyanRampersad.com, where you can find a beautiful red ribbon. It's a very beautiful ribbon. Yep. Especially when you put it on a full screen uh, OLED panel. Looks really good then. With HDR, and the notch just (laughs) is so edgy. 
<laughs> exactly. Well, have a good one. You too.